This is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. Uh, this is part two of four parts on my coconut uh, talk that I gave called Crazy for Coconuts at Raw Spirit Festival in uh, Prescott, Arizona. In this part, we're going to discuss uh, the different kinds of coconuts and some just fun coconut stories. I have a couple different coconuts up on the table. So uh, let's see how many people are familiar with this kind of coconut. Hopefully everybody in here, the young Thai coconut is from Thailand. They're, uh, they're imported. Uh, next here, I have another coconut. How many people are familiar with this one? Yes. A couple people. So uh, you may be familiar with the one that looks like this, but it's brown, right, everybody? So I don't have the brown one as an example, but uh, if I did have it, that would be on this side. So this is the youngest coconut. This is more of a middle-aged coconut, and the brown would be a more mature, maturest coconut. And each one is beneficial in its own way. Um, and then the thing I like to point out is that this is the coconut has no husk on it. So it's been dehusked and this coconut has partial husk. So they shaved off part of the husk to leave some on. So this is a coconut I think I got probably in Florida and this has a whole husk. And sometimes they're bigger or smaller than this. When they dry out, they, get, they, get, they shrink a little bit. So that's what it looked like before they shaved it off like this. They shaved it off basically to uh, have it smaller to ship. Otherwise it's a lot bigger to ship. The other thing I want to point out, uh, so like uh, some of the coconuts that I get that are actually this big, the, this nut inside is actually just this big. It's not even that big. And this is actually one from Florida I got. And uh, we're really lucky here. How many people know what this is? Wow, man, that's insane. So, uh, so what this is, this is the real coconut. So this is a mature coconut that's been dried out, and this is a fresh coconut. It should be all green. It's starting to get a little bit old. But they take this and they shave off a lot of this to make this. And these are really rare to find. The only place I get these in the continental US is um, when I harvest them myself, pretty much from Florida. In Florida, you could actually buy them in a couple places like in Fort Lauderdale and South Florida. Um, other, other places, if I go to Hawaii, I've gotten them, and then in Puerto Rico, and in all these different places when I travel, I'll harvest my own coconuts and I'll bring them back with me to California. So I go out, I stay with my friend Paul Nissan in South Florida, and we'll go out with Paul or something like that by myself, and I'll cut down all these coconuts and I'll pack two luggages full, like 50 pounds each, because that's my weight limit, and I get to check two bags for free since I'm an elite member. And I'll bring back 100 pounds of coconuts back with me to California so I have good coconuts, because you don't know what you're missing if you've never had these. And we're really lucky here at this uh, event that somebody actually has these coconuts, these young green coconuts um, that they imported from Costa Rica. And that's the first I've known that you could actually import these like this from Costa Rica. So I encourage everybody to go down to the booth down there and try one. They're only $5, and now that is a little bit expensive for one of these, but if you've never had one, you have to try it because it's absolutely amazing. Now, the, the thing I want to say about that is if you're used to eating these, right, and this is my experience. I was used, to, you know, living in the San Francisco area. I ate a lot of these, but my family, my mom's family, my mom was born and raised in Hawaii. So I traveled to Hawaii a lot, plus I like the tropics. So I was used to eating a lot of these when I first went raw. Then I went to Hawaii, and this is what you find off the tree. And I'd pick them off the tree, and I'd cut it open, and I'd, and I'd drink the water. And I'm like, man, these taste like shit. They don't taste good. And like, and I didn't get it. And my friends in Hawaii are like, John, you're crazy, man. These things are the best. Those Thai ones, they suck, man. And I just didn't get it because these ones are sickly sweet. It's like if you compare like a Granny Smith apple or, you know, like a Pink Pearl apple. I mean, people have Pink Pearl apples. Cool, you guys are rocking. So uh, Pink Pearl apples are like an heirloom apple that are just really have a good flavor, but they don't ship well, they bruise easy, and you rarely find them unless you find somebody that's growing it. So these ones are more like a Fuji apple, where it's just sickly sweet, and this one's more like an heirloom, like pink pearl apple. I mean, it's not quite as sweet. Pink pearls are actually a little bit tart unless you get them really ripe. But man, these ones are the real thing. They're full of life, but they're not sweet. But the meat, the meats in these are way better than these. These are like jelly meat, and these have a more incredible flavor. And sometimes you'll get these that are sweet, Sometimes you'll get them, they won't be as sweet, but they're, they're all good. And the thing I've noticed lately, another thing that I've learned a lot about is uh, the vibrancy of the food. And that's one of the reasons why I grow my own food, because I have the highest vibrancy food in other, uh, you know, in science may call this biophotons, prana or chi energy. It's just like vibrancy of the life force in that food. And we want to eat the foods that have the highest life force, because that life force transfers to us. So for, for example, these guys might have been picked, you know, one month or two months ago. And then they basically carve off the husk and then they wrap it in plastic and you know when they do wrap it They have to preserve it because if you just did this and I've shipped these back from Hawaii and things like this And what will happen is it's already starting to happen on here 
around the top it'll get black and they'll get this black mold fungus in here growing. You can actually kind of see it. There's probably, it's already starting to grow in there. This is like fungus mold. It's rotting. And what happens is this rots down into the eyes of the coconut, which is the softest part, and then it just turns the, the water and the meat just bad. It just tastes horrible. So I, I learned that I have to eat them fast, uh, otherwise I lose them because I have lost some that I've brought back with me and it's really sad. So these guys, if you bring them back like this, I mean, the longest one that I nurtured in my fridge once I brought it back from Florida, I think I kept it about three weeks. And by that time, either I was going to eat it or it was going to go bad. But that was when I harvested it fresh one, the day before I left and got on the airplane. And then I put it in a refrigeration right when I got home. That's not optimal either. We want to try to eat things at room temperature, not too hot, not too cold, because when we're eating things hot or cold, our bodies have to compensate and use energy to cool that thing down. So I encourage everybody to, you know, if we had food growing in our front yard garden, we, had, we would have no need for a refrigerator because we would just go pick things as we need them and we wouldn't have to buy them and then put them in the fridge to save them so they won't go bad, right? So yes, yeah, so these are a lot more vibrant, a lot more full of energy, and I was talking about, so they do dip these. So what, they, what my research has shown, and this is documented on my website, youngcoconuts.com, and I had a link to the, the USDA document that sh st stated what these were dipped in, but I think had since disappeared. It's dipped in thymobenzol, which is a fungicide, and sulfides. So sulfides are like, you know, you, they dip in fruits to make them bright orange, you know, for like the apricots. It's basically it's a preservative. So if they didn't put the preservative in the fungicides, these would actually go bad really fast, and then the company would lose their investment, and that's a lot about the industrial food system, and even with some raw food packaged foods. People don't want to lose their investment in their product because they will lose their profit. And the reason why they're in business, unfortunately, for most people are not to, you know, not for your health, it's for their profit and for their pocketbook. So that being said, there's also rumors about this going around too. Like, you know, John, I heard these are dipped in formaldehyde. I know somebody's probably thinking that right now, <laughs> out in the audience maybe. These are not dipped in formaldehyde. I don't know how that rumor got started. It's totally not true based on my research. The other rumor that I often hear is, you know, these are irradiated before they come in. So to but the best of my knowledge, these are not irradiated. Um, to be the best of my knowledge, foods that are irradiated have to have a Redura symbol and it looks like a pretty crazy symbol on the side of the box. And they do uh, radiate uh, some tropical fruits from foreign countries, so I was really sad to find out when I was in Texas one time, uh, they had the Redura symbol on the side of a, a loquat box. Or, I'm sorry, Longin, 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 Longin box. So I'm like, okay, I'm not buying Longins anymore because it's freaking radiated. But the best anyways is to eat things that are locally grown and things that you pick yourself or, you know, from fresh from your farmer's market that are picked hopefully the day before. So the biggest question about the coconuts is how to open them. And if you have any questions, I'll take them at the end. And it's really easy to open them. So some people use machetes, and I don't have a machete, or I don't have a big meat cleaver. Some people put it on its side, and then just clank it down, and then slop the whole thing off. And you know, I used to do that when I first got into raw foods and first started eating coconuts. But the problem with that is you cut it off, and then the water starts pouring out. And in my opinion, the water is the most important part of the coconut. It's not the meat. The water is the most important part. It's very high in electrolytes. I think the World Health Organization at one point called it, you know, nature's Gatorade. It's so high in electrolytes. It has basically these things called cytokines or plant cytokines, which you could think of as like a plant hormone. And these plant cytokines basically uh, keep the DNA replication because if you think about why coconuts are on earth, you know, the coconut is a big palm tree. They're beautiful. They drop the coconut. They usually grow on the beach. They grow under 100 uh, feet in elevation. They won't really grow optimally in higher elevations. They'll drop on the ground in the beach. And then the waves will come in and then take it in and then carry it out. And then this will float, you know, maybe for a month, maybe for two months, you know, across the ocean to another island, land. And then if the conditions are right, then it sprouts. And what happens is out of the holes and where the eyes are, in the main eye or the mouth, and I'll send this around because some people don't know there's two eyes and a mouth in every coconut. If you look closely, the eyes have little eyebrows. They're kind of, you can feel them. And the mouth is like more round and circular. So I'll send that around so people can see the eyes and the mouth. And the, the mouth is the easiest hole to pop open on a coconut. So if you open in a mature coconut, you want to always go through where the mouth is, not the eyes. The eyes are really hard. That being said, right where the, um, the mouth is, that's actually where the coconut sends out a sprout or a shoot. And it sends out a new little baby palm tree. So the coconut is basically thrown so that it can drop the drop the nut in the ocean, it could float across for a month, and then still be viable after a whole month. And how it does this is those plant cytokines. It's 
the plant cytokines and basically make sure the DNA replication is still working properly and there's not any mess, messed up genetic code. And basically what it is, it's basically anti-aging for the coconut. And when we eat those cytokines, we anti-age as well. So uh, coconuts are probably my number one favorite food. If it wasn't for coconuts, it would be a lot more difficult for me to, you know, been raw all these years because they're really a big part of my diet. At one point in my raw foods, I was just doing up to six coconuts a day. And that's before I knew better. And so at that point in my early years, that was a good thing that I was doing that many coconuts. But if I did that now, it would not be a good thing. So for every person, I would ask you to check in with yourself and see. I mean, if the option is drinking a coconut water or drinking a soda, well, right, that's a no-brainer, right? Drink the coconut, it's way better. If it's the option is drinking a coconut or drinking the, you know, Tetra Pak coconut, well, the fresh coconut's better. If you have an option between, like, the Thai coconuts or, like, a fresh coconut, right? Freshest is bestest. And then, like, between these ones and then the one that's going around, the Mexican, I prefer the Mexican because, number one, the Mexican, to my knowledge, are not treated with the fungicides and the thymobenzol and the, and the sulfites. And also, they're from Mexico, so they're a lot fresher. That being said, the water is definitely not as sweet as these, so if you have a sweet tooth, this is what you want. But I've gotten used to more of the, the water that's not sweet. You know, I like it a lot better. The meat is also a lot thicker in those, so if you're doing a culinary dish where you need thin meat to make noodles, Ronnie and Mayer are selling noodle tools down there, then you might want to get the younger ones. But for the most part, I drink the water out of those guys, and she just shook it. And when you do go to select one of the white ones, you want to shake it, and you want to not hear it slosh or slosh very little. You want it as full as possible. The fuller it is, the younger it is. The more sloshing and like, you know, then it's like it, the older it gets when you can hear more sloshing happening in there. So nowadays what I tend to do is I tend to use like uh, two waters a day in my smoothie, is the base of my smoothie. So instead of drinking water, I prefer to drink coconut water because it's actually living water. Uh, that being said, um, I, I rarely eat the meat on the inside, so I have special tools and because I, I flew here and I didn't check bags, I can't take my special tools with me because they would have took them away. But I have special tools actually that allow you to easily get the coconut meat out of the coconut so then you could use it because a lot of people have tried to get the meat out, they use knives and pry it and you could cut yourself, it's very dangerous because the meat is literally stuck into the shell. And if we weren't into raw foods, what we could do is we could put this into the oven at a low temperature and basically it would, the temperature of the heat up would cause the, the meat to crack off. But since we are raw, we don't want to heat things up. Uh, we need to use a different machine. So I have a grating machine that clamps onto the table. You turn and it basically makes shreds out of half a coconut. I have another one that you, has a scraper. You just scrape the shreds out. I have another one that you just has, it looks like a long hook. And you get the coconut in half and you put it in between and then you can take out the whole meat as one shell. So each of the different ways to get the coconut meat out, I'll do different things. When I shred the coconut, usually I'll take those shreds and then I'll put in the dehydrator. And I make my own fresh dehydrated coconut shreds. So many people have bought coconut shreds in the health food store, right? Like most people in here. So what you may not know is that those, based on my research um, and you know my, my reaction to my body, those contain something. They're bleached, they're sulfides or something because every time I eat those shreds, I'll break out in a rash. The other thing is because they're so they're so white. I mean, they're just so white. They look unnaturally white. And when I make my fresh stuff, take it out and dehydrate at low temperature, you know, it's not like that bright white. The other thing that I've learned about the coconut shreds is that those are basically the press cake of the coconut oil industry. So they press out the oil, then they dry those flakes to get, sell it to you, and it doesn't contain the oil. Well, why do they do that? Well, number one, it's their waste product they're selling you. Number two, is if it did have the oil, there'd be a higher chance of it going rancid. Because if I make this stuff and I shred it out, I dehydrate it at low temperature, 118 or whatever, if I don't use those shreds within like six months, I could open the bag up and I had to learn this the hard way just by doing it. I like forgot about a bag, opened it up, man, it smelled rancid, it was bad. Because fats go rancid unless they're somehow preserved or heated up too hot or, you know, I don't know exactly the, the chemical properties, but yeah, so we don't, we want to eat things that spoil. We don't want to eat things that stay on a shelf forever. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about the different kinds of coconuts and all the other information presented. This was part two of four parts. Part three is up next. Make sure you check the sidebar on YouTube for part three. So once again, this is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time.